In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a pro blog. And I'm really excited about this tutorial because of the quality of the results that you're going to get. I have found a combination of tools that will allow anyone with a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to create a professional blog without you needing to be a designer, know how to code, or really have any special skills. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make this design here, but you won't be limited to using this design. When you're done with this tutorial, you'll be able to choose from thousands of professionally designed website templates, and you'll know exactly how to modify them to suit your needs. I'm Tim from realwebsitehints.com, and it's my mission to help you find the best and easiest ways of building great quality websites. Here's some of the comments from my previous tutorials where I've helped other people build great looking websites. Glorabelle9911 said, awesome, I'm so excited to post. Thank you so much for this tutorial. You have made the journey less confusing. Shannon Springman9861 said, great detailed tutorial. As a newbie creating a food website slash blog, this is invaluable. Thank you so much, Tim, for contributing your time and putting this together. Renag797 said, best help hands down, thank you so much. And Angela Anderson2257 says, thank you so much for such a thorough tutorial. I'm creating my food blog now and it's looking so good. Thank you, check it out when you have time. In this tutorial, we're gonna use WordPress because there is no question that when it comes to building a professional blog, you need to use WordPress. However, the problem that I've always had with WordPress are the themes. I can never find a theme that I truly like. And when I find one that's close to what I want, there's always something about it that I want to change, either the functionality or the design. But with a standard WordPress theme, you need to actually modify the code of the theme to make those changes. So in this tutorial, we're gonna use a WordPress page builder called Elementor Pro. And it is true that with Elementor Pro, you do get access to several pre-built website templates, but I've looked at all of them and I really don't like any of them. So I'm going to introduce you to an amazing resource with thousands of professionally designed website templates for Elementor that actually look good and are easy to use. Using Elementor with one of these templates is way better than any WordPress theme because each template comes with multiple pre-designed pages and lots of pre-designed page sections. You won't even need to limit yourself to just one template. You can easily mix and match pages or page sections from multiple different templates. So putting your website together is more like putting together Lego blocks rather than creating a sculpture from scratch. But what's awesome is that you still have the option to easily change anything about the design of your pages without you needing to know how to code. And with this resource, you will not only have access to website templates, but tons of other design resources like stock photos, videos, Photoshop templates, graphic templates, and a ton of other elements that you can use to improve your blog or any other content that you're creating. Now, this isn't going to be the easiest or the cheapest way to build a blog, but I do think that it is the best way to get exactly the results that you want. And just because this tutorial isn't going to be as easy or as cheap as possible, doesn't mean that you won't be able to do it or that it's really all that unaffordable. This tutorial is still perfect for beginners because I'm going to walk you through everything step-by-step step and explain everything as I go. And when we're talking about price, most of you probably pay more per month for your cell phone bill than this website will cost to build and run. And I make these videos to help you find better and easier ways of making websites. So part of this tutorial is that I want you to ask questions down in the comments. I also want you to share your new blogs with the community. Yes, I wanna see your results. So please share your finished websites down below. So now let's get an overview of this tutorial. First off, if you want to skip ahead to any part of this tutorial, you'll find chapter markers that will allow you to find or come back to exactly what you need to know. Next, I want to break down the cost. Hosting in our domain name will cost us about $23 per month. That might seem pricey at first, but I've come across other companies that lure you in with low initial rates like $4.99 a month. But what a lot of people don't realize is that after that initial period, those prices skyrocket to $20 or $30 a month, and you aren't getting nearly the same quality of hosting that we're gonna be getting for $23 a month. This hosting company also checks all of the boxes for me. First off, it's a high performance professional hosting company, and it's the only hosting company that I have ever seen that offers a 100% uptime guarantee. Included with the price of this hosting is also access to Jetpack Security, which gives you malware scans, additional backup options, and most importantly for bloggers, spam comment removal. And spam comments are one of the most annoying things about building a blog. 
Normally, Jetpack security on its own would cost you nearly the same price as just this hosting. So right there, that makes this hosting company actually a great value also. With this hosting company, you also get a staging area, which is a second copy of your website where you can test changes before you push those changes to your live site. And lastly, this hosting company makes it really easy for you to grant access to anyone who you want to help you with your website. So if you do wanna hire some help to work on your website, you can easily give that person access. And most importantly, you can easily take that access away. Next is the page builder. For the page builder, we're going to be using Elementor Pro. That's gonna cost about $5 per month. And it's gonna allow us to easily make the changes to whichever design template you decide to start out with. The resource that will give us access to the blog templates, stock photos, graphic elements, and tons of other things that you can use to improve your blog, that subscription is about $16.50 a month if you sign up for one year. But if you don't think that those other elements will be useful to you, you could just sign up for a one month plan for as little as $30 and then choose the template that you want to build your website with and you can cancel the service once you've finished building your website. And that is totally fine too. So all in for everything, we're talking about $45 a month, probably less than you pay for your cell phone bill. And I think that's well worth it for you to have your own professional blog and a blog where you can start out with a professional design, but you're also free to make the changes that you want to make it truly your website. So here's what we're going to cover in this tutorial. In the setup, we're going to get a domain name, sign up for an email address at that domain name. This address is going to be the basis for your blog persona. For example, I use Tim at realwebsitehints.com to run everything related to my blog, my social media accounts, and everything else that I do that's related to my website. Next, we're gonna sign up for hosting, and then we're going to connect our hosting domain to our hosting company. I'm going to give you a tour of WordPress, and we'll make a few adjustments to the WordPress settings. Then we're going to install the Elementor page builder. After that, we're going to download and install our website template for Elementor, and then we're gonna start building. I'll give you an introduction to the Elementor page builder and how to use it. Then I'll show you how to use that template to build your pages and set up the look of your website. We'll add in a blog feed and single post templates. We'll add and modify the home page template to include the parts of it we like and remove the parts we don't. And then we'll do the same thing with the about us page and the contact us page. We'll look at how to edit the header and footer sections. And finally, we'll check to make sure that our pages are mobile friendly and make any modifications we need to so that our website looks great on desktop, mobile phones, and tablets. And by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a clear grasp of how to set up, build, and edit your own professional blog. So let's get started. So let's go ahead and get started actually building our website now. So what we wanna do is either open up a new window by typing control N on a PC or command N on a Mac, or you can open up a new tab by doing control T on a PC or command T on a Mac. So I'm gonna do that here. It might be easier for you to open up a new window. That way you can keep this tutorial open in one window and then all the things that you're doing to build your website in another window. And then we wanna go to bloghints.xyz and that's going to take us to this tutorial resources page here where I've got all of the links that you're gonna to need to follow along with this tutorial. Some of the links on the resources page do help to support this channel and this free tutorial. So if you decide to use the links on the resources page, I do appreciate that. And so the first thing we wanna do is get a domain name. So we're gonna get a domain name with Hover. I find Hover to be an excellent, easy company to use. It also makes it really easy to connect our domain name to our hosting company, as well as several other different hosting companies. If you decide that you wanna move your website to another hosting company or another service, you can do that really easily with Hover, which is a really nice benefit, I think. So the first thing we need to do is pick a domain name. So I'm gonna try traveltechblog.com. Unfortunately, traveltechblog.com is taken, but we have all these other options, all these other endings or what they call TLDs or top level domains to choose from. And I think that using a different top level domain might be a good idea. Like perhaps I could try traveltech.blog, but you just want to keep in mind that if there is a promotion on that alternate ending, like for example, this dot store has a 299 promotion. So that's going to be to register this domain is going to be $2.99 for the year, but then you want to watch out and make sure you're paying attention to how much the top level domain is going to renew for after the introductory period. So in this case, it's $64.99. And we've got some crazy ones here like .inc, which start out at $349 and then go up to $2,499. For this tutorial though, I'm just going to go with traveltech.site. 
I am aware of what it's going to go up to after the first renewal period, but this is really just to show you guys how to do this. Again, if you can find a .com, that is the best. I think right now you need to start thinking about three or four words to find a .com. Otherwise, you know, trying something like .blog, .site, those are also other good options, .xyz, but you know, just choose what you think is gonna work best for you and what people are gonna remember the easiest based on what's available. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to my cart. Okay, and then I'm gonna go up here to my cart. And then all you wanna do here is just check out. I do recommend that if you're following along with this tutorial that you get an email address with your domain name. And I think that part of the reason for that is after you get your domain name, I think it's definitely a good idea to go through and start signing up for all the different social media accounts, whether you're gonna use it or not. It's gonna just sort of claim that name. And also I found that when you're signing up with the hosting company, we're gonna use Pressable. You can use it with the WordPress.com account, which is kind of like WordPress's social media account. And it kind of connects your entire WordPress world together. And so I think having your website using your new persona that you're creating with your blog and your new thing is a good idea. For example, I have Tim at realwebsitehints.com and that's the persona that I use. So if I was signing up for this hosting, I'd wanna use Tim at realwebsitehints.com to sign up for everything just to keep everything under that one name. So with the email options here, you've got forwarding. And so what forwarding basically does is it just takes that email. So for example, if I have Tim at traveltechblog.site, any email that comes to that address, I can forward to any other email address. So I can forward it to my Tim at real website, hints.com address. I can forward it to a Gmail address. The one thing to keep in note is that if you start getting a lot of emails and you're forwarding it to a Gmail address, Gmail can start slowing down your email that you're getting forwarded to. With a business that I was helping out, we were forwarding a lot of emails and we started wondering like, what the heck's going on here? It's taking two or three days for emails to show up. And the reason why is because Google, of course, wanted us to play for a business plan instead of just using, so we had to eventually upgrade that. So I think if you're just starting out, you can definitely use the forwarding, but you might just wanna be safe and just start out with this $20 a year plan. I mean, it's only $20 for the whole year to add email. But of course that's up to you. And I'm gonna go ahead and go with this $20 for the email. And then we're gonna go with this secure checkout. And I already have a hover account, so I'm just gonna go to my hover account. But you guys go ahead and sign up here and I'll meet you on your hover dashboard and I'll show you what we need to do next. Okay, so after you go through the checkout process, you should be taken to this page here, which has the domain name that you signed for up here, as well as the information about your domain name. You will also see here on the right, all of the different services that you can easily connect that domain name to. And it's gonna be really easy for us to connect our domain name to our hosting company. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you didn't land up on this page for some reason, perhaps you ended up on this page here, which will probably just show one domain name, but it might show the list of your domain names. And then to get to the page that I was just talking about, it'll be here just by clicking on the domain name there. So from here, what we want to do is we wanna go ahead and create our email. So to do that, we're gonna click create an address and we wanna give it a name. So I'm gonna go with Tim at traveltechblog.site. And you want this basically to be, I would say the main name that you want to be associated with you and your blog. So I would, as I said before, I use Tim at Real Website Hints, I use Tim at Tech Travel Blog. It's kind of what you're gonna to use to write most of your posts when you're starting out, things like that. That's the email address I would use here. And then create a password here and do create mailbox. Okay, and then to access this email box, what we do is you can open up another tab and you can head over to mail.hover.com. And you're gonna sign in with the password that you just created. And you can also choose this option if you want it to use a cookie to keep you logged in. And then go ahead and log in. And there we go, and this is what our email box looks like. There's also in the help files, you'll find out how you can access this email through an app. So if you have a mail app on your computer or on your phone that checks your mail, you can find out how to do that. And the first thing we wanna do here is just check to make sure that this email is working because we're gonna be using it to sign up for our hosting. So just go ahead and send yourself an email. I'm gonna do that right now. Okay, so let's try this. Travel tech 
blog.site.com. I guess that's one good thing about using .com is everyone knows .com. And then I'm gonna go ahead and send this. And then we can click refresh. For the email and domain name to get configured, that process can take anywhere from a few minutes to up to 24 hours. So right now might be a good time to take a break and then come back and see if your email is working. I would take a break for 10, 15 minutes, come back, see if it's working. If it is, continue on. Otherwise, you might need to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so the next thing to do here is to get our hosting. And so you can do that by either, again, going to bloghints.xyz.com or if you have another tab or another window open with that window, you can just go back to that. And then we wanna click on Pressable Hosting under step two, Get Hosting. Okay, so this is Pressable. This is the hosting company that I was so excited to introduce you guys to. It's truly professional grade hosting. So if we scroll down here, you can see that on Trustpilot, they've got 4.9 stars out of five. Definitely professional grade. If you scroll down here a bit farther, this is the one thing that totally blows me away, is 100% uptime guarantee, which I have never seen before from a hosting company. Usually it's something like 98%, 99%, but no. Pressable says they're going to give you 100% uptime, which, which I think is pretty awesome, but that just tells you the quality of this hosting compared to the competitors. So this is professional grade hosting to help you get your website launched and ready to go in the most professional way possible. So to get started, let's click here on find your plan. I'm gonna scroll down here and it starts out here with three WordPress installs, but we don't need three WordPress installs. We just need one website to start out with. So we're gonna click on that. So I definitely think it's worth saving some money here by just going with the yearly rather than the monthly. You still get a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you find that this isn't working for you or it's not what you want, you can get your money back within 30 days. So go ahead and click on that and then just fill out your information here and I'll meet you guys on the Pressable dashboard. One more thing that you wanna do before we start building our website is make sure that especially if you're using your new email address, make sure that you've confirmed your email address with Pressable. So whichever email address you use to sign up for your Pressable account, you wanna confirm that. So if you go over to your email and then you go to Pressable here, just click on activate my account now, just to make sure that you're not gonna have any problems later on. Our account's been confirmed. We we'll go back here to sites. Okay, so this is the Pressable dashboard. Let's go ahead and start building our site. So we're gonna click here on create a site and you need to give it a site name. Pay attention to this here. There's no special characters or spaces permitted. So it's just the name of your site. So no periods, nothing else, just the basic name of your website without anything else. So I'm putting in travel tech blog and then we wanna make a WordPress website. That's correct. We can leave these to default. We don't wanna create a staging site right now or anything else. We just wanna click create. So now it's installing WordPress and getting our website all set up. So we'll give that a few minutes to do that. Okay, and then the next thing we wanna do is connect our domain name to our website. So to do that, we're gonna click on settings and then domains. And then we wanna add the domain name that we created. To make our lives easier, we wanna use the DNS wizard. So here we wanna add in the domain name that we created. So I did .site, you might have a .com or .xyz. And then we wanna click on connect to registrar. It's gonna automatically detect that we registered our site with Hover. Entry is what Pressable uses to connect your domain name to Pressable, so that's why it says this. And then we just click continue here. It's detected that Hover is where we registered our domain. And now all we need to do here is just log in. And it's gonna take a few minutes to authenticate and then it's gonna connect our domain name to our website. You might need to enter in a verification code. So grab that from your email. And this is the information that it's gonna to use to connect. So we just say, okay, continue. All right, and it's now configured and ready to go. So we can click, click done. So now our website, our hosting company is connected to our domain. And it might not work right away, but it can take anywhere from 20 minutes to 24 hours for everything to work right. So when somebody types in your domain name to it connecting to your website, that can take up to 20 minutes to 24 hours. So just keep that in mind. But right now here, you can see that they've given us a staging website to start building our website with. 
just in case our domain name isn't ready to go, but we're ready to start building. The other thing that I wanna show you is this collaborators tab here. And here you can very easily add a collaborator. So say you wanted to add me as a collaborator, you simply type in the email address of the person that you want to become a collaborator and then you click next step and then you say which site you want that person to be a collaborator of and then you click next step and then if you want that person to always be a collaborator on new sites allow them create to create new sites for you so if you've got somebody working for you and you want them to be able to do that you can set that up and then here is sort of the power features of this probably from in most cases you'll want to uncheck all and then just give people wordpress access so that means they'll have access to building your website but if you need them to do something more advanced on your hosting end you can give them access to any of these other features here since i'm giving myself access for myself i'm just going to click check all here and then you can click create collaborator and that will add that collaborator to your website so very powerful feature you also have email which i mentioned before it's definitely very good powerful email does cost a little bit more than Hover, so you might want to just start out with Hover for now and then decide later which service you want to use for your email. They also offer plugin management, which can be a really great feature. I'm going to show you how to automatically update the plugins that you have on WordPress from WordPress. But what this will do is this will not only update the plugins for you automatically, but it'll also detect if there was an issue when the plugin was installed. Because what happens with WordPress is that if the plugin gets automatically installed by WordPress and it breaks something, WordPress doesn't know and it just will keep your site broken. And so your site might be down or might not look right to visitors. Whereas this will first, with this service, Pressable first makes a backup of your website, they upload the plugins, and then if anything should go wrong, they roll back to that backup and send you an alert and let you know. There is an extra charge for that, I think that it's about three or four dollars a month but that can be well worth it to make it easier for you to manage your website without having to worry about something going wrong and a plugin breaking your website and you not noticing it let's go here back to sites now typically to log into wordpress you would click here on the wp admin and this has the email address and password but we haven't created a password yet and actually pressable makes it even easier to log in by just clicking on this one press login here so let's go ahead and do that now. And that button here takes us to the WordPress dashboard. So this is what they call the back end of WordPress or the back end of our website. This is where we make all the adjustments and settings and build our website. So I'm gonna give you a quick tour of the WordPress dashboard and then we'll start building our website. Okay, so this here is the WordPress dashboard, what's sometimes referred to as the back end of your website. And this is basically where you do the work on your website and change the settings and adjust everything. So in the middle area, we have the actual dashboard and there's various different bits of information here and you can adjust what information shows up up here with the screen options. So first of all, we can clear this welcome to WordPress version 4.3. Every time you install a new version of WordPress, it'll give you the information about what's new in this version of WordPress. So you can just click dismiss here to close that. And then you can decide which items here you want to appear on your dashboard. So if you're interested in WordPress news and events, you can keep this on. I'm going to turn it off. The at a glance is kind of handy. Uh, the activity is also kind of handy, just showing what's happened on our website. But again, it's up to you whether you want to turn those on and off. And as you add different plugins to your website to add different functionality, they might add additional things to your dashboard here. You can also adjust the view of your dashboard by dragging things around. So you can put the things that are most important to you at the top and the things that are less important down at the bottom. We can just close the screen options here. Over here on the left, we have basically all the different functions that we can perform on our website. So we've got posts. This is where we can add posts. Media is where we can add media. So typically this is the pictures that we upload to our website. But if you have a PDF that you're sharing, for example, you could also upload it in media. And of course, when we make the posts, you can actually upload that media directly in the process of making a post or a page. You don't need to upload it into media, but this is an option if you want to preload things onto your website. We've got pages. This is where we're going to build page comments. This is where you can manage the comments on your website. So when people leave comments, and later on when we set up Jetpack, that will automatically filter out most of the spam comments, which is a big deal. Because um, spam comments are just super annoying and it just 
kind of ruins your day when you get too many spam comments and not enough good comments. And this is definitely going to happen when you're first building your website and getting things started. It's going to be mostly spam comments until you start building up an audience and getting good comments. So just minimizing that spam comments is definitely a good idea. And we'll, we'll turn on the Jetpack plugin later on, which will add in this Akismet plugin for blocking spam. So we'll do that in a little bit. We've got appearance, and this is where we edit the themes. And this is the editor if you want to dive into the code of your website. We're not going to need to do that at all, basically. But if you did, that's where you would edit the code for your website. Plugins, this is where you add additional functionality to your website, and we'll be looking at that. Users, this is where you manage the users. So right now we have just the default user that was created when we created our website with Pressable. And then tools, the main tool we're going to use here is the import function to import some blog posts, just so you guys have some content to start working with when you're building your website. And then settings, this has various different settings. So let's actually go ahead and start with the settings and we'll make sure everything's set up the way we want it to get started building our website. So here under settings, we'll go to general. And this here is where we have the title of our website. So we probably don't want it to be called my WordPress website. So for this example, I'm gonna call it travel tech blog. You should call it whatever you want. We also have a tagline, which is a little bit more information about what your website's about. So, you know, look for something that maybe best describes your website. And this isn't necessarily going to show up, but sometimes in some situations it may show up or you can decide to have it show up. So that's something just put in there. Just make sure that you've got something that makes sense in there in case it does show up unexpectedly. Got the administration email. So since I signed up with the email that I created for this website with the Hubbard.com account, all of the emails about the website. So any things about updates having in my website, new comments that come into my website. If I have form on my website, the form data will go to this email. So this is a really important email to make sure that you have access to and that you're checking regularly. So you wanna make sure that you've got that administration email set up the way you want it. You wanna keep this default user role to subscriber. That way, if you build in some functionality for a community, say, or you want to make it so that people have to subscribe to your website to be able to access certain parts of your website, you want to have it be subscriber as the default. Otherwise, you're starting to give them access to actually edit your website, and you don't want that. So we want to make sure this is set to subscriber. Set the date format the way you like it. And then anytime you're making any changes in WordPress, it's very important to look down at the bottom and click this Save Changes button button to save your changes. Otherwise, you'll have made those changes and you'll wonder why they didn't take effect. Over here under Writing, you've got this default post category, so you can change that when we add a category to our posts. So we can that's something to keep in mind if you don't want uncategorized to be the default category. You might want it to be something, just a category that makes sense for your website. Reading, we're going to be looking at this later when we actually add some pages to our website so that right now the default is that our home page is going to show a listing of all of the posts on our website. Uh, but later on, we're going to actually build a separate home page and a separate posts page where our blog will be. So we'll have a home page and then a blog page. So we'll look at that in a little bit. And then the other important thing we want to look at here is permalinks. And we want to make sure that this is set to post name here rather than the, all of these confusing things. We've got the date and then sample post. Not very helpful for search engine optimization and just to be able to tell people where to find things on your website. It's much easier to have your URL and then the name of the post. So we'll set that. And then of course we want to click save changes. And now let's go back up here and we'll look at posts. And we just want to delete the default post. To delete it, you can either push trash here or if you're deleting multiple posts at once, you can click on here and then click the bulk actions and then move to trash and then click apply. And then we can just delete this from the trash. There we go. Uh, categories, we're going to automatically upload some categories here. So we're going to leave that alone for right now. Pages, we also want to delete the default sample page. So we can click trash here. The privacy policy, WordPress attempts to make a privacy policy page for you. And they also attempt to get any plugins that you add to add more information to that privacy policy regarding the cookies that it uses and things like that. I'm not an attorney. I don't really fully know what you should have on your privacy policy page, but do know that WordPress does make an attempt to add in the information that you need on your privacy policy page. I don't know whether that would hold up or not, but I'm going to leave that here. Something you should probably think about having. I wouldn't worry about it right now, but maybe in a couple months, come back, revisit this, check your plugins, check with your attorney, see what you need for a privacy policy page. 
And then under here, comments, this is where the comments will show up. The Since we deleted that first post, it deleted the default first comment, so we don't need to worry about that. And there we go. So let's just go to appearance themes, and this is the default theme. So one thing that I like to do is just turn on automatic updates for this theme. That's going to make sure that we keep this theme up to date, because one of the threats with any kind of software, and WordPress is included in that, is that any piece of software that's out of date could potentially have security threats to your website or to your computer. So you wanna make sure that you either are manually regularly updating your website or just turning on automatic updates. So I did that there. And we are gonna change this theme, but it's always a good idea to have a second theme on your website for troubleshooting. So we're gonna leave this theme active. And let's look at plugins here and we'll see what default plugins are added. So we've got the Akismet anti-spam plugin already installed. To fully activate that, you need to have a license for it. So we're going to activate the Jetpack plugin later on, which will activate this for us. And then the Pressable OnePress login we want to leave on because that makes it easy for us to go from our Pressable account to our website with just this one click button here. So that's good. That's one thing I really like about this hosting company is they're not installing a bunch of bloatware in our website. So I definitely appreciate that. So let's start by adding some posts to our website. And what I've done for you guys is I've already created a bunch of sample posts that you can download so we can kind of fill out this website so you can see what you're doing as you're building it. Because right now, if we go to a homepage of our website and to get to the homepage of your website, from your dashboard, you just click up here or you can click visit site or just click on this button up here. And so this is what our website looks like. It just has the default data from the theme. And then to get back to the back end, you can hover over here and either you can click on it to go to the back to the dashboard or you can go down here to dashboard. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add in those demo blog posts that I created for you. This is gonna allow you to really see what your website's going to look like because without the blog posts, you can't really see what the form of your website takes. So to do that, we're gonna go back to the resources page here, and then we'll scroll down here, and you're gonna look for this button that says download blog posts. And you might get this error, I'm using uh, Google Drive for this. I'm gonna to try to change the service so that you don't get this warning, but I can assure you there is no virus on this file here. It's an XML file, which is the database file that stores all of the posts in, so click download anyways and then click back up here to go back to the resources page. And then I also have a blog logo file here. So if you don't have a logo and you wanna just kind of follow along directly, you can do this. Also later on, when I introduce you to the Envato elements, this is where I got this logo file from. So there's a bunch of different logos that you can choose to make your own, or you can also go to something like Fiverr and have somebody make a logo file for you. So just while we're right here right now, I'm gonna go ahead and download this logo file. So there we go, it's in my downloads folder. And now let's go back to the dashboard of our website. And so to import this file, we're gonna go here to Tools, Import, and we're gonna click on this Install Now for WordPress, and that's going to install the WordPress Posts Importer. Also import posts from various other different services. So if you already have a blog and you wanna transfer the blog posts, you can do that here. I would definitely suggest doing that right in the beginning before you start building your website, just to make sure that everything is importing the way you want it to, and that you have all your posts and your data there. But there we go. So now if we go over here back to tools and import. Okay, so now if we go here to run importer, and then we can click choose file, and then go to your downloads folder, and we want to look for this one that says awesome travel blog wordpress and then click open. And we want to do upload file and import. And then here it's asking you what user you want to have associated with this blog post. And actually, this brings me to an important thing is we should change this to an actual name here. So before we import this blog post, let's go ahead and adjust that username. So we're gonna go back over here to users, all users, and we're gonna click edit under this user here. And you could also create a new user, a new, if you wanted to, if you didn't set up the email with the main email that you wanna use for your blog, the main email that you wanna to use to write with, you could do, you could add another user. You probably want to make that user an admin, so if it's assuming that it's you, so that uh, you have control over your entire website when you log in with that user. But I'm just going to go ahead and type in a name here, my name here, and we got the nickname, which is the alternate login name, and then you can decide down here how you want that name to show up. So I'm going to have, so this is going to be the 
author name that shows up on your post. And then you can add a Gravatar picture, and we'll do that a little bit later on when we set up Jetpack. So then click up Update Profile. And now if we go back over here to Tools, Import, Run Importer, need to select that file again, the awesome travelbog.wordpress file, and then click upload. And then now we can assign all the posts that we import to this name here. And very important here, we wanna click the download and import file attachments. This is because I've put together a bunch of photos so that it fully fills out our blog post with not just text, but with photos also, and then click submit. And in a few moments, that's going to import all of those blog posts as well as the media for it. So now if we go over here to posts, you'll see this whole list of all of the posts that I've created for you guys as part of this demo. And then if we go over to media, you should see a bunch of images here and as well as the import file here. So there we go. Okay, and then let's go back to the dashboard. So let's go ahead and activate the Jetpack plugin. So let's go over here to plugins and then click activate under where it says Jetpack. And then let's click finish setting up Jetpack. So let's connect it to our user account. And so this is gonna automatically set it up to the email account that we signed up for our Pressable account with. So here we're gonna create a Jetpack account or a wordpress.com account. So type in your email address here, which should be the same one that you signed up for Pressable with, and then click continue. So then you might need to give it a few minutes, but if you click over here to your email, you should see this email here, and then it's, we'll click on finish setting up Jetpack, and then we'll click approve here. And I did go to the WordPress website earlier, so if your process is a little bit different, if you need to sign up for a WordPress account first, uh, but just to know, when you sign up for WordPress, you don't need to buy anything, you don't need to buy any hosting or anything like that. If you just put in your email address, that should be all you need to do. Okay, and then while we're dealing with this, let's just do one more thing and sort of finish setting up our WordPress.com account. So if we go over to WordPress.com, and it should sign you in automatically since we just signed in. But if it didn't, you can go to your webmail here and click the log into wordpress.com email that you should have received. And then here we can go over to our settings here. We can click here to change the photo so we can add a photo. And then I'm just gonna add in this image here of myself. You can crop it here change my photo. So now everywhere that on our blog and any place else on WordPress and many other places, this image here is going to show up as your main image and then you can add in your name. WordPress is also kind of like its own social media platform. So you can add your public display name. So this is probably going to be your handle. So I'm going to use Travel Tech Blog and you can choose to hide your photo if you want to. You can give yourself a little bio, which is probably a good idea. Like who you are, what your blog's about, that kind of thing, and then click Save Profile Details. And then here under Account Settings, you can also change your username to the name that you want. Okay, and then match those two names, and then click Save Username. There we go, and now we've got our persona here. And then for some reason it erased my photo, so let's just add that again. Change my photo, there we go. Okay, so that settles that. Got our WordPress persona set up here. Okay, and then we can go black, <laughs> then we can go back to the dashboard of our website. So we can close this, we can close this Jetpack page, we can go back here to Pressable, and then we can click on the OnePress login. And now you should see here at the top that you've got a little avatar for yourself. And we've got the Jetpack stats now have been added to our dashboard, so we can check that out. We also have some information about what Akismet is doing for blocking spam comments, blocking login attempts, etc. And if we click on, if we hover over Jetpack or if we click on Jetpack, we've got sort of this dashboard here. And we've got Vault Press, which says that it's active. And so it's gonna do an initial backup of our website. And then anytime that we make a change, it's gonna log that change and we can actually roll it back to any previous change that we've made. We've got a speed score of our website, Akismet anti-spam plugin set up. We can also install the protect plugin, which will scan our website for any malicious code. So we've got that set up. And then if we click on view under vault press backup, you can see that it's preparing to backup. So it's gonna start backing up our website right now. 
So there we go, that's all set up. And then we can just go back to our admin page by clicking down here at the bottom and going to WP Admin. And then we can go back to the dashboard here. And I'm just gonna hide the Jetpack stats. Okay, so now it's time to start actually building our website. And to do that, we're gonna need to use a page builder as I've talked about before, and we're gonna use Elementor Pro. And Elementor is definitely one of the top page builders for WordPress. It gives us an amazing amount of flexibility. And the number one thing that it does is allow us to install other website templates that have been created by other people. Elementor Pro does come with its own website templates, but to be honest with you, I am not that big of a fan of them. I haven't found any of them that I'm like, yes, I wanna use that template. I think it looks awesome just don't quite sit well with me. But Envato Elements that I'm gonna introduce you to later has thousands of templates for Elementor that I'm sure you're gonna find a design that you're gonna to like to build your website with. So let's go back over to the resources page and then let's click on Get Elementor Pro here. And that's just gonna take us to the Elementor website. And then here we can choose our plan. I think for most people using the Essentials plan at $59 a year is gonna be good enough, but if you do wanna have pop-up forms and if you wanna be able to edit the e-commerce features on your website using Elementor, or if you wanna be able to collect people's email addresses either inside of Elementor or connect Elementor to a marketing app, you'll need the $99 version. The $99 version also allows you to build up to three websites, so that might be something you want if you're building websites for other people, but if you're just starting out, I'd recommend going for the $59 version. You can always upgrade later and then fill out your information here and pay for it. And then I'll show you how to download Elementor Pro. Okay, so after you signed up for Elementor, you'll probably be taken to a dashboard here, or maybe you'll be taken to the subscription pages. It's been a while, so I can't remember exactly where it is, but we wanna look for this download button. So either there's the download zip button right here, or if we look up here at the top, there's another download button here and we can download our subscription for Elementor. And so depending on which one you've purchased, you'll see one of these links here, and then you can just click download, and that will download that to your computer. And then we can go back to the dashboard of our website here, and then we can go to plugins, add new plugin. And we wanna click up here where it says upload plugin and we wanna choose that file, then we wanna click on that file that we just downloaded and click open. And we wanna click on install now. And then we wanna activate the plugin so we can start using it. And then we also need to activate the standard Elementor plugin so we can click install now to activate that. And we can click activate plugin here. And then if this didn't happen automatically, you'll need to connect your Elementor account that you created where you paid for Elementor Pro to your website. So to do that, you click connect your account here at the bottom. A little pop-up should come up like this. You might need to log into your account if you haven't logged in already. And then you wanna click activate your license. Perfect. And then the next thing we need to do is install a theme that works really well with allowing us to use Elementor to basically build and design our own theme. So that theme is called the Hello theme. So you wanna click on continue with Hello theme down here. And if you haven't given your site a name yet, go ahead and name it here, but we already did that. But if you haven't done it for some reason, definitely change that name here and then click next. And then here, if you have your own logo and you wanna install it, you can, or if you have that logo that we you downloaded earlier from the resources page, we can add that logo here. So I'm just gonna drop in that logo that is in my downloads folder. You can't see the text because the background's white here and the text is white here, but with the template that we're gonna use, white text works best, so don't worry about that and we can click next here. And there we go. And we can either start editing, you can look at the professional designs that Elementor Pro has, but for right now, I'm just gonna click skip and you might get a notification like this for AI with Elementor. I haven't tested that yet and I haven't looked at it, but here is uh, what the editor looks like for Elementor. On the left, we've got widgets. On the right, we have the canvas. And we're gonna go into more details on this a little bit later, but first we need to install our template so that we don't have to start 
with a blank page like this for our website, we can actually start with a really nice looking pre-made design and then just make the changes to it that we want. So to exit this, we're gonna click on the three bars up here and we're gonna click exit. You'll get an option here as to where you wanna to exit to. I like to exit to the dashboard because there's already a way to exit to this post from here. You can click on view page from the three bars up here. So I like to go to the dashboard as my option and then click apply. And then we don't need to save the changes here because this page doesn't mean anything to us. And then here we are back on the dashboard. Now we've got this Elementor widget here on the dashboard, which we can leave, or as you know now, you can remove it if you want to. And the next thing we're gonna do is take the steps that we need to to install a great looking template for our blog. Okay, so let's get that template installed and start building our website. So go back over to the resources page here scroll down and then first I want to show you the other blog templates that are available so when you're done with this tutorial you can choose from one of these blog templates there's also thousands of other website templates available that you can choose from but these here I went over 50 different blog templates and kind of analyzed them and looked at them I literally installed every single one and tested them for quality. And these ones here are the best ones that I've found. Uh, the numbers are a bit arbitrary, kind of my scoring system um, you can need to work on. But actually this design here I got from one of the templates that was on the Envato Elements we're gonna get our template from. And this design, I wasn't able to port it I wasn't able to pull it directly from that design, but I was able to install that template onto a website, look at how they made the design, and then recreate something similar myself. So we've got this design here that I made, and then each one of these, I've got a little bit more information about each of the templates. So if you click here, read more, I made this page here. So I made a database with these different fields here. I was able to assign numbers to them and have all these numbers automatically calculate an average here and then the pros and cons and so that every single one of these pages has the same layout here without me having to redesign each page i can just add in the numbers for each one of these the pros and cons a little description and then it automatically makes this layout for me and that's the power of using elementor for building your website and if you'd like to learn how to make these custom post types using Elementor, let me know down in the comments below and I'll try to make a tutorial about that if I get enough requests. But if we click the back button up here, you can choose from any one of these designs. These are all great choices. I think my favorites are the one we're gonna use here, the Kanawa theme. I also like the Blog Hive theme. If you want a dark website, the Mystic one is good. And then I think for just kind of general blog websites, the Poet and Pen blog and the Ink Craft blog offer just kind of like that general, normal blog look. So we can download the Kanawa template either here by clicking View It, or if we go back to the Resources page, you can click on Kanawa template here. Okay, so here is the template. In order to be able to download it, we will need to install it. But if you scroll down here, you'll see what pages are included. You can also down here see all of the images that were used to create this template. So once you've signed up for Envato Elements, you could actually license and use every single image on this template. And so you could legally use all of the images and this website exactly how it is once you have the subscription. All you need to do is just add these images to your project of this website. So you could actually have your website look like this. And most of the templates on here have that ability. So if you signed up for Envato Elements, you can use the images and you can use the website exactly how it is. And also with Envato Elements, you have a ton of other things that you can get access to. You've got stock videos. So if you create videos like I do, you've got stock video, you've got stock footage, motion graphics, you've got video templates for After Effects Premiere Pro. So different transitions, different titles, things like that. You've got music that you can use, sound effects that you can use, graphics templates. So these are Photoshop templates, Illustrator templates. So that's where I got the logo for this website from. Um, you've got Figma templates for different types of website templates. And also if you're building a blog, having access to photos that you can use on your website. So if you have a travel blog, maybe you forgot to get that one shot of Paris that you need, you can find it in the photos here. Pretty much any different type of blog, you're gonna find a photo that you can use for your blog post right here. And you can, all you need to do is just add it to the project that you're using it for. You've also got fonts. 
There's Lightroom and Premiere presets, so you can get various different presets for your photos or your videos, something that you know other people are charging for. You've got access to a ton of different things to play with here. So I think that if you're a creator, having Envato Elements is really powerful. One of the other things I want to make sure you know how to do is find all of the templates for Elementor in Envato. It's a little bit buried, a little bit hidden, because it's actually not the main thing that they do, although it's still an amazing resource. So we hover here over More, and then we hover over WordPress, and then Template Kits. I think almost all of these are Elementor template kits. Um, let's see if we click Show More under here with Compatible With. Elementor, Elementor Pro, basically the same thing. There aren't any others, so I would just not check any of those boxes. I suppose sometime in the future they might not add other ones. Um, but yeah, then you've got all of these over 4,000 different Elementor template kits that you can choose from, look at. You can also filter it by the different types of websites that they're designed for. So that's where all of those different template kits are. But let's go ahead and click back to the Kanawa theme here. And all you got to do is just click subscribe here. And so this $650 per month is if you sign up for the year plan. And I'll be honest with you, I initially just signed up for the one month plan. And then when I realized all of the benefits that I'm getting with Envato Elements, all the things that I can use as a creator and as a blogger to improve my website, I found it to be definitely worth the $1,650 a month for the year. Of course, you do have to pay that all up front. But if you're not comfortable with that, you can also sign up for just one month. And I believe that it's $32 to sign up for just one month. So if you click Start Now, then you can just sign up for your account here, and your name, email, and, and password, and then click Continue, and then just go ahead and fill out the checkout, decide whether you want to do just a month at a time or whether you want to sign up for the year contract. And then we can go back to the Kanawa template where we can download it. After you've logged into your Envato Elements account, you might need to go back to the Tutorial Resources page to get back to the Kanawa template easily. And then all you have to do is just click Download here, and then choose which project you want to assign that to. You can either search for a project, but since you're just starting out, you need to create a new project and assign that to it. And all the images, anything that you want to use with this website, you want to assign to the same project. So Envato can know which piece of content that you're creating and license the piece of content that you're using to the piece of content that you're creating. And then click Add and Download, and that's going to download it to our Downloads folder. And now if we go back to our dashboard for our website, we need to now, in order to be able to upload that template, we need to go over here to Plugins, and we need to add a new plugin, and we want to search for the Envato Elements plugin. You should be able to just type in Envato, and you want to look for this one here that says it's by Envato, and it should say Envato Elements and Photos. And so this is going to allow us to also add photos directly from the back end of our website from Envato Elements. So then click Install Now. And then click Activate. And then that's going to add this Envato Elements item here in our dashboard. So then to add, so then to upload that template that we just downloaded, you hover over Elements here and then go to Installed Kits. I know it's confusing because it's not been installed yet. And then you can click on here to upload it. And you should have this Kanawa Modern Travel Blog Elementor template here. And then click Open. And here we go. These are all of the different pages that come with the template. Some of the other templates do, I think, a little bit better of a job because not only do they have each individual pages, but they've taken a lot of their best sections and actually made each one of those also individual items that you can use. So instead of just installing a whole page, you can choose which sections you want. But in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to pull a section from one page and be able to easily add it to another page or save it so that you can add it to multiple different pages. So the first thing we need to do is install the requirements for this template. So we want to click on this button here that says install requirements. And as I said before, I've tested all of these templates before, and I am a big fan of only installing the plugins that you need. And in my testing, I found that the only plugins you actually need to make this template look the way it shows in the demos are the Material Design Icons template and the Elements Kit Lite. So we can unclick this 
elements pack light and we can just leave the elements kit light active and the material design active and then we can uncheck the premium add-ons for elementor these are free plugins so you can always install them later if you want but as i said before i just like to keep my site as simple as possible and only install the things that I absolutely need to install. And then we do want to have it add the Elementor default color schemes. So that's gonna be the default color schemes that are part of the template and the Elementor default typography schemes. So that's gonna make it so that the fonts used on the template are the same fonts that we're using on our website. So then click install above selected requirements and give that a few minutes to add in those templates and we can click close here. And we'll also just make sure that the global kit styles have been installed, which I think we already did in that last set step, but let's just go ahead and click import template for that. So these should be the styles, the default styles for our website. And then we we're gonna definitely be using this homepage. So we can install this homepage template now, or I'm gonna show you actually how you can install this homepage template later. And we're gonna be using the About Us page and the Contact Us page. And then this here is the Archive Categories page. So this is gonna be the page for our main blog feed. So we wanna import that template. And then this page here will be the Search Results page. And I like the way that this Search Results page works. So we can click to import that template. We've got a 404 page template. So this is, if someone tries to go to a page that doesn't exist on your website, it comes up with this page. And this page is fully designable, so you can sort of make the most out of this 404 page. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that right now. And then they have this option for an archive author page. So if you have multiple different authors and you wanna have a different design from your standard blog page design, with a feed that has all of the same articles written by the same author, you can install that. But for this tutorial, I'm gonna have all of our blog feed pages, no matter what the category or the author, use this setup here. But you'll get an idea of how you can change that for other purposes like this. We we'll also wanna have the single blog post template installed. So this is what our, so this is what each individual blog page is gonna look like. So we've got the blog text over here on the left and then an article over here on the right. And then of course we wanna add in the footer, which is the bottom part of our website and the header, which is the top part of our website. Okay, so we've installed all of those. Now let's go back here to the dashboard. Okay, so before we start designing our pages, let's add a couple more pages so that we can build out a menu eventually and also so we have a place to start putting the designs that we have downloaded. So let's go over here to Pages and we'll click on All Pages for now. And then we have this one page, which is the default page that was created when we installed Elementor. So let's just go ahead and trash that page. We don't need that. And then let's go ahead and add a new page. And this is about using the block editor. And I'll show you how to use the block editor when we get into making posts, because I do think that generally for making blog posts, using the block editor is a better way to go than using Elementor. Of course, you can also use Elementor if you have a more specialized blog page, like for example, the blog page that I created about the different blog templates that I have, I used Elementor to do that, but most of my blog posts, I use the standard WordPress block editor. So let's just close this, call this first page home, and then we'll click publish to add this page to our website and then click publish again here to the dashboard and we'll add another page. And this page is gonna be our blog page. So I'm gonna call it blog, but you might wanna call it news or whatever it is that sounds like the right name for the blog page on your website or the page where all of your blog posts are gonna be. And then we'll save that. And then we'll go back here and we'll add another page. We'll add an about us page. And we'll publish that and then push publish again. And then finally, we'll add a contact us page. And then we'll click publish and we'll publish that. And then we'll go back to the dashboard. And one more thing I wanna show you here under posts. I also added some categories here. So we had that original uncategorized category and then I added these additional categories and when you add a category here, you've got the option to add a description. And this can be a really good way of creating a search engine optimized page. And we'll look at 
how these category pages are formed using Elementor, but something to keep in mind that if you do want to add a description, you can always click edit on the category, and then here you can add the description. And then the slug is what the URL is going to be. So it's going to be the name of your website slash Asia, and that's the slug. All right, and we'll go back to the dashboard. Okay, so we've made some changes to our website. You might be curious what the front end of our website looks like right now. So let's go ahead and just take a look, satisfy that curiosity. So right now we still have the original design of the hello theme without any of the styling from our template. So we need to tell Elementor and WordPress that we want to use that new template that we downloaded. So to do that, we're going to go back to the dashboard. And then here under Elementor, there's this item called templates. And we want to go over here to where it says theme builder. And the theme builder is the part of Elementor Pro that allows us to design every single part of our website, just as if we were designing a template. So typically when you download a WordPress template, that template is responsible for creating your header, your footer, the single post page, so what your blog posts look like, a single page template. So when you create a page in WordPress using the block editor, what that page formatting is gonna look like, the archive page, which is your posts page or the post feed, search results, and then loop items are special items where you can add posts to a page or in my example here on my website, here on this post page, I'm using a loop item here to display all of these different cards for my different blog template reviews. And then of course the error 404 page, the page that people will go to, if for some reason they type in the wrong thing when they're going to your website or if that page is missing for some reason. So what we wanna look for here is, actually we can just click on archive here. So we're gonna edit the posts page first. And the reason why this archives page wasn't showing up is because the condition is set to just categories and not all post types. So let's change that first. So we'll click on edit conditions here. And then instead of categories, we wanna have it be all archives. So that means every single different post page is gonna display with this template or with this style. And this is really the power of using Elementor rather than using just a typical theme. It's because a typical theme you wouldn't have easy control all of this without actually make changing and modifying the code. But with this, if you want a specific category to have a specific design to it, or maybe on that specific category, you want to display certain types of ads. So say in our example for this travel blog website, you've got an Asia section, and maybe you've negotiated a deal or you've got a promo that you can provide for some sort of an Asian airline for air travel to Asia. You can display that ad or promo on the sidebar for the categories, for the Asia category. And then of course you can do the same thing for the single blog posts. So for the single blog post, you could have every blog post that's in the Asia category show up a certain way or have a certain sidebar. So it's a really, really powerful feature. But right now to keep our life simple, we're just gonna make it all, all archives. But this is where you would go to change it if you wanna make a specific design for a specific category or tag, for example. We'll do save and close here at the bottom. And then let's go ahead and edit this archives page. So click edit. Okay, so this is what our archives page is gonna look like. And by default, it's gonna use this term archive, but on each of the different category pages, for example, this title here is gonna show up as category and I'll show you how that works in a little bit. But right now we're looking at the Elementor Builder interface. And on the right hand side here, we've got what they call the canvas. And so this is where you can sort of preview your design and work on your design. And then this box here is called the navigator. So that is showing all of the different sections. And this can come in really handy because for example, this header section here is overlapping with the top section because in this design here, we've got the menu area overlapping the top section here where we have the title for this category. And so if you wanted to edit that, you could just click on this section up here and that brings up the settings for this section. And then you can also click on this arrow here and you're seeing that there's a column here, which is what this gray box is. 
And then inside that column, we're having two headings. So you've got two headings that are overlapping. So if you're having a hard time reaching that heading in the background, for example, you can click here, or I guess click here to reach the one in the background. And so that's what this navigator does. You can close this navigator so it's out of your way. And then when you want to add the navigator back in, or if you want to use the navigator, you can click on this navigator button and it pops it right back up there. Then on the left-hand side here, we have the settings for each of the different items that we're working on. And then if you click on this multi-box grid here, we have all of the widgets that are available in Elementor. And so we've got all of the basic widgets here that come with the free version of Elementor, as well as more advanced widgets here that come with Elementor Pro. And basically each widget is a different design function. So for example, here we've got a title widget. So when you click on it, or I should say a heading widget, because this is using heading widget or title widget here. Here we have the post archive page. And so this is a specialized widget that's used for putting on archive pages specifically so that it's automatically going to pull the related posts related to the page that it's on. So we don't have to go through and make a new page for every different category. It's automatically gonna know what category the person has selected and pull the appropriate posts from the database for that category. Then here on the right, we've got a search widget, another heading widget, I believe, oh no, this is a divider widget. This here is a recent posts widget. So it's not displaying right now, but when we view it on the front end, it will show recent posts here. And then this one here, I believe is a call to action widget. Yes, and there's a couple of different ways that this can show up. And then we could add whatever we wanted to along here. And so for this design here, we're looking at a section. And then within that section, we've got two columns. So we've got this column here, you can see by the gray box here. And then on the right hand side here, we've got the second column, which is operating as a sidebar for our posts. Okay, so let's first look at this post section or the archive post section. So to edit it, we're gonna click on the pencil icon here. And then it's all set up for us, but maybe there's something we wanted to change. Like if we scroll down here, for example, maybe we don't want to show the date. So if we didn't want to show the date, look here under metadata and you'll see date. And then you can hit the X and close off that date box. And then if you did want to add the date, you could click this plus icon here and then click date and it's gonna add the date down there. We can also add a read more button at the bottom of each one of these. So we've got a read more. And then if we wanted those buttons to be aligned with each other, we can do that here. We also have an option to display or hide this badge here. So under badge, we can do show hide, and then we can choose which kind of text, text, taxon, taxonomy we wanna display. So if we click here, we've got tags. If we wanted to use tags as a way of organizing our posts, we could do that and we could have a different tag show up here. And we also have the avatar show up of our author. So if we had a bunch of different authors and we thought that was important for people to be able to see what the author looks like, we could show that here. And also under metadata, of course, we could add the author name. So depending on whether you have multiple authors or not, you could have those be displayed here. Okay. Now let's go over here and look at the sidebar. So one thing I know I like and I want to save because we're going to use it later on is this search bar. So we're going to click on this search bar here. And what I want to do is I want to save this styling of the search bar that the template creators have made so that I can use this styling later on on another page. So to do that, hover over the pencil icon, right click, and then scroll down here to save as default. And what this is telling us is that the next time we add the search form widget to a page, it's gonna have this design already ready to go. So we're gonna click save for that, and that's gonna save us some time later on. And basically anything that you like the look of, and every time you pull that widget from the widget box here, if you wanted to have that specific look, you can just use that same method by right clicking and then saving it as the default. And we will use that at least one more time in this tutorial, if not a couple more times. Now, a popular thing that I've seen other blogs do is have a link to the About Us page here in the sidebar of the blog. So let's go ahead and do that. So to do that, we're going to use the call to action box and we could have either dragged it in or since it was already selected here, it appeared here. Let's, I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this and then add it in again, because typically the way I do this is by not clicking on it, but actually dragging it in. So click, drag it over, and then place it where you want. And then we can go ahead and 
edit this call to action box. So click on the pencil icon. You can see the editor for the call to action box is already here on the left. So the first thing we can do is add an image. So we can go, we could either upload a file here or look on the media library for a file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and choose an image that looks like it might be the image of the creators of this blog. So we can use this image here. And when you're adding images to a page, you can use what's called alt text. And that's text that you can put in that tells search engines what this picture is about. And it also is used for people who have vision disabilities to be able to hover over and see what that image is about. So it's also used for search engine optimization because you're telling search engines what that image is about. So if an image has text in it, or it's an important image as part of your design, you wanna add in the alt text here. And if you've ever done a search on Google search for images, you know, say you were looking for an image of a cute dog, chances are that they filled out the alt text there and it says cute dog someplace in that alt text. So we're gonna go ahead and select this image and add it. I'm not gonna add in any alt text for this image, but if this was really my blog, I would probably say, you know, a picture of whoever the blog creators are and I would type that in right here. So, you know, picture of Jim and Jane, creators of the travel tech blog, for example. Okay, and then we can adjust this heading. You can either adjust this heading by clicking here, or sometimes what's easier is here under content to adjust the heading here. And then the description here is this section down here. So something like that, for example. And the last thing here is this button text. So we could change what the button says right here. But I think most importantly is clearly this button doesn't match the aesthetic of this template. So let's go ahead and adjust that. So to do that, we're gonna click on style here. We've got style and we've got advanced and we'll be looking at the kinds of things that we adjust in these different panels. But here under style, we're gonna look for button and then here's where we can adjust the color. So we're gonna use the color that this template already has. So for the text color, we're gonna use the header font color. And then for the background color, we're gonna use the button color. And then for the border color, I'm also gonna change that to the button color because that's how this design works. And then the hover is when we hover over an image and you'll see that we sort of have an inverse except for we're using white for the text here or the icon here in this case. So let's do the same here. So for the text color, we'll change that to the white color. And then for the background color, we'll change it to the header font color. So now when we hover over, you can see that it changes over and we'll make the border color the same too so that it matches the size. There we go. And then you can see how this button is sort of changing size as we hover over it. If you like that, that's great. Otherwise here under hover effects, we can change what that animation is. So this here, I believe that this here is the animation for the image. So we could change that to none. And now we don't get any animation or we could change that to zoom out and we get that animation. So there we go with that. Let's see here under button. Okay, I guess I thought there was a way to adjust this animation here for the button, but I don't see it here. Okay, well, I'm gonna leave that here for now. There are, as you can tell, a lot of different settings to Elementor, which is awesome because it allows you to, without code, design any different kind of part of your website. But it honestly can be a little bit frustrating finding the exact setting that you are looking to adjust. And I have to say, generally what I do is I just go through sort of trial and error and figure it out. You can also, of course, do a Google search for it. And fortunately, Elementor is a very widely used tool for building websites. So there's a lot of information that you can find out. You can learn just about anything about how to use Elementor by searching for it online. Okay, so there we go. That's gotten the adjustments that I wanted to make to this page done. Just sort of scroll through, see how it looks. We also have this box down here, which perhaps we don't want on our blog page. If there's something you wanna promote on here, you could do that, but let's remove this section here. But let's save this section so that we could use it later on another page if we wanted to. So to do that, we're gonna hover over the section here, and you can tell that you're hovering over the section because we've got this pink area. And over the dots in the middle, you wanna right click, and then you're gonna do save as template. And you want to give this template a name. So I'm going to do a uh, box with image section and then, and then click save. And now it's saved in the my templates and I'll show you how to access this later on on a page, but it's so saved here so we could add it to another page if we wanted to. And now we can delete it from this page here. And we've got this latest article section, which I think looks good. And you probably want to swap this out for something else if you were really building this website, but I'm gonna leave it here because it sort of fills out the design. 
and let's click update to save those changes. And then let's exit back to the dashboard and see what our website looks like now. Okay, so let's go ahead and now that we've made those changes to the archive page, look at what our website looks like. All right, so there we go. Now we've gone from that sort of no design here to having this design from our template and this is showing us what the archive page looks like. But if we went and looked at one of these archive pages, then we would be able to see that it would say Europe, for example, at the top. Now let's look at what the design looks like for our single post page or our blog pages. Okay, so we've got the blog page design here. It is showing the categories for the blogs up here and our blog post is showing up here and we've got the right hand side. Now I have had it sometimes because I've tested this tutorial a few different times where this page here doesn't show up like this. So let me show you just in case that happens to you how you would get this page to show up if this is just showing up as the generic hello theme styling. So let's just look at that real quick in case you're having that problem. So we're going to go back here to the dashboard. We're going to go over here to templates under Elementor. We're going to go to theme builder and then we're going to look for the single post template. So we've got that here or you can click here where it says single post and then all you need to do is just click edit here, click update, and then we just want to go back. So click exit here, or actually if we click theme builder, that'll take us back to where we just were. And then we go back to the single post again, just click edit conditions, posts, and then just click save and close. And that should get this single post to appear if it didn't appear already. So now let's go ahead and edit the design of this single post. So here we're going to click on edit. And let's just do a quick scan down of this design and see what it looks like. So on the left hand side here, if you click here, you'll see that it's the post content. So when we're using the WordPress block editor, anything that we put in the block editor will show up here on the left. So we've got this is information showing up in the block editor. And then over here on the right, this is information here that's part of the sidebar, that's part of this second column that is part of this design. So we could change this latest articles to something else, or if we want to adjust what is displaying here, if we click on this pencil icon, we can see it says posts. And if we scroll down here to query, the query is what data that the that is being pulled to show up here in posts. So right now it's showing basically all posts. You can see here it says date all, ordered all, etc. But if we want to do a show something more specific, so if we want to do a term and say I haven't created one, but if I had created a tag called favorites, we could search for that. But let's just say, for example, that we wanted to have it show all of the Asia posts. So we could do that category Asia, and now it's going to only show the Asia posts. And that's going to be for every single single blog post. And again, if we wanted to change that from the template editor, we could change it so that this design here for the single post is showing up only on a specific category. Uh, so we could make multiple different designs and have different items show up here, add in a different image or an ad or whatever we wanted to here on the right. For now, I'm just going to close out of this. And then let's scroll down here a bit more here. We've got the author box section. So this might be something you want to include if you have multiple different authors, or if on every blog post you want to have it linked to all of your posts or the archive page for all of your posts. I'm going to delete this section because I think for a one author blog, probably not necessary. So to delete it, right click on the pencil icon and then click delete. And then let's scroll down here farther. And here we've got related articles. And one thing I already know um, from having tested this before is this here, if we right click on it, we'll see that this is posts, not archive posts. So previously when we're looking at the archive page, we had the archive posts. Here we have just posts. And I know that I'm going to want to add these, this post design to our home page. So what I want to do here now, so we don't have to come back to this later, is save this design here so that we can use it on the home page. And I already know that in this template, this has not been saved as the default look. So let's save this as the default look. So when we add the posts widget to any page, it will have this look. So I'm going to right click here. I'm going to do 
save as default. And now every time we add the post widget to a page, it's going to have this default design, which is the same design that is part of our template. Okay, so let's change this query so that it's not always showing the same two posts, which is the most recent post. And instead of ordering it descending, we can order it by a random. And so now it's just going to show random different posts. If you did use tags, for example, to connect different posts together, you could do include by term, and then you could type in here the name of your tag. Right now, we can only do categories. So if you wanted to show Asia, for example, you could do that. But this is probably be most powerful with tags. But I also think that for right now, and uh, when you're just starting out, using order by random is fine and using all of dates. And there we go. So we've got a related post section here down at the bottom. Let's also actually remove some of this space here. So it's a little bit closer to our post here. So it's a little bit easier for people to see. So to edit the spacing here, we're going to click on this section and we're going to look here under advanced. And here is where you're going to see the spacing here. So we've got margin, which is the spacing outside of the section. And we've got padding, which is the spacing inside of the section. And if you forget, don't worry. You can just mess around with them. Just know that margin and padding are the two things. And EM is a form of spacing, and it's related to the size of the font the EM is. So let's just try changing this to two and seeing what that looks like. There we go. I think that spacing is a lot better. And we can scroll down here to the bottom. And just so you know, this box here is to add another section. But when we're not viewing it to edit it, this here and this here will be closed up. So you won't see this on the front end of your website and your, or your viewers won't see this. Okay, so I think we've got a pretty good looking single post page. So let's go ahead and click update and let's go back to the dashboard. And let's just see what those changes look like. Let's go back to visit site, got our post page here. Oh, I forgot about the annoying animations. I definitely want to turn those off. But let's first see what our single posts look like now. Oh man, those annoying animations. And if we click on Europe here, for example, this is clickable. And now we can see the Europe title up here. Go back. Okay, let's look at adjusting these annoying animations. So to do that, we want to hover over here where it says edit with Elementor. And this is where you're going to choose what to edit. So we can edit the footer, the header. If we were on a page, for example, they would have the page here instead of the single post. But here we've got single post. So click on single post. I've been looking at this template for so long that I've been ignoring the animations. It's just like disappeared in my mind. But I know if I first came to this website, I'd be like, what, what is happening here? Why are there all these animations? So in this section here, I can tell that each one of these different items that the animation is within the item itself. So to remove the animation, click on the pencil icon. We want to look for advanced. You want to scroll down here to motion effects. And you can see here it says entrance animation fade to left. So let's just remove that. We'll go to none. And then we'll do the same for the title here. Click on the title, go to advanced, scroll down to motion effects, and change this to none. And the same thing here for the date of the post. Advanced, motion effects, remove, none. Okay, and I don't remember how these animations were coming in, but I think it's actually related to the entire column. So let's see if that's true. So if we click on column, advanced, motion effects, yes. So this entire column, all of the items in this column are fading in from the right. So we can remove this, set that to none. And we can do the same here with the left column. So generally in this template, most of the time you'll see that the motion effects are in the column, but sometimes it'll be in the individual widget. So it just depends, uh, something you've got to look for, but believe. I don't mind this sort of fade up animation. I don't know why. I feel like that kind of looks more natural. Uh, but if you don't like it, you know now how to remove it. And we can click update here. 
And I suppose we should do the same thing on the main category page. So let's go back to the dashboard. And let's go back to our site. Yes, let's remove those animations from this here. So we'll go to Edit with Elementor, and we want to edit the archive template. So we'll click here. And let's remove it from this title here. Motion effects, none. And let's see if we can access that one in the back. Archive title. And if you can't access it, if you're having a hard time grabbing it, remember you can use the navigator here. And we'll look for motion effects. And we'll do none. And then let's remove these effects here from the column also. And the second column here. And click update. All right, so now we've got our posts page and our single post page set up the way we want to. So let's go back to the dashboard. And the next thing we can do is work on actually building a home page. Okay, so now let's work on building that home page for our website. So to do that, we're going to go over here to pages, all pages. And then we're going to go to that home page that we created. And we're going to click Edit. And right now, if we were to edit it here, this would be editing it with the WordPress block editor. But we want to use Elementor so we can grab the design from the template that we downloaded. So we're going to go over here to Edit with Elementor. Let's go ahead and add in the home page template from the template that we downloaded. So to do that, we want to actually click on this Envato button right here. And we want to click on this Kanawa template kit and view installed kit. And then here we've got the home page template and we want to click insert template. That's going to import the files for the home page. And then it's going to add it to this page here that we've created. Okay, so here we go. Now, the first thing that you'll see is, hmm, something doesn't look right here. We've got this title up here that says home, and this header section here isn't overlapping with this top section here, right? So what's going on here? Well, what's going on here is that the page template from the theme has this header view here, and we want to use our own header view. So to change that, what we want to do is we want to click on this settings icon here. We want to scroll down here to where it says Page Layout, and we want to change this from Default to Elementor Full Width. Okay, there we go. Already that's looking a lot better, a lot more like what it should look like. Now, so we don't have this problem again, let's change the default so that it is the Elementor Full Width, so every new page that we add uses that Elementor Full Width. So to do that, we're going to go up here to the three bars at the top, we're going to go to Site Settings. And this here is sort of all of the general site settings for our website and generally for Elementor. So if you see here, if we go over to Global Colors, you'll see that these are the global colors that were added in by the template. And we can turn the style guide off so we can see what the changes look like on our website if we make any changes here. And let's go ahead and click Back. And we'll save those changes so that the style guide preview doesn't show up. The fonts that are being used across our website are here. Typography, button styles, etc. All of that is here. But right now, let's look for layout. And then we'll scroll down here. And we'll, for the default page layout, we want to use Elementor full width. And I want to click Update to save that changes. Save that change, and then we can go back to the editor now. Okay, so now let's take a look at the design of the home page. Now here we've got the header section here. We're going to edit that later on. We're actually going to add a search bar up here, but that's not part of the home page. That's part of the header section. Uh, I'm going to 
click the refresh button here so we can see what kind of annoying animations there were. There we go. We got all sorts of annoying animations. We're going to have to turn those off. So let's go ahead and remove those annoying animations. So let's see if the animation here is in this title area here. So we'll click on the pencil icon, go to advanced, look for the motion effects, and yes, it's there. So we'll remove that and change that to none. Do the same for this text down here. And of course, also, if you like the look of the home page, and this section, you might also want to change the text to match what you would want on your website. But right now, perhaps you're just learning how to do it, so we can just leave the text the way it is. Click Advanced, Motion Effects, and we can remove that back to None. And did the button fly in weird or do something? Let's see here, Motion Effects, fade in from right, it did. Change that to None. And then we've got this welcome here, which is hiding in the background. So let's see if we click on that. Advanced motion effects. Um, zoom in. I might leave the zoom in. I think that actually might look nice on this section here. OK, so we've got the header section here. Now we've got this first section here, and I think pretty much what I want here is probably to have like our main category show up and then to have our blog feed. So I don't think I'm actually interested in this section at all. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it in case we want to use it later or so that you can use it later. So to do that, hover over the section three little six little dots here and do save as templates. And I'm just going to call it people on the right. I don't know if that's a great description of it, but that'll work for me. And close this. I'm just going to delete this section by clicking the X. I do like the look of this section here. I might be able to use it for something. We'll move its position on the home page in a minute. Now, this section here is what they're showing for the posts of our website. Basically, what we have here is a post widget that's just showing one column with one column here with one post per page. And then over here, we've got a listing of articles. I think I just want a regular blog feed here. So I'm just going to completely delete this section here also. Again, if you want to save it to use it later, if you like this design, you can do that. I'm just going to click X and delete it. Now here, we've got this popular category section. And I do like this, and I want to keep this. So I'm going to drag this here up here below the first part. And as you can see, we have what happened here is we had two sections that were overlapping. So let's drag this section with the actual, because the section I was dragging over was overlapping, this might be a time to get out the navigator. Done this before. Let's add, oh, okay, here's what it is. Th that section there goes as part of this section here. Which one is it? Is it this one? No. It is this one here, how they did that. So if we click on, make sure you're on the edit intersection here, and then click advanced. Oh, that's not how that works. Let's see here. Click on this section here, advanced. No. This column here. Let's go over here to the navigator and see if we can figure out which section or maybe which column it is. Aha, there it is. Okay, so we've got this section here below it, which is where these items here are sitting. So it's sitting in this gray column here. And if we click on Advanced, you can see that the margin is negative 10. So negative 10 means that it's going to overlap over the section above it when it's on the top. So that's how they achieve that look. All right, now let's look at the annoying animations here. Hopefully it's on the column here. Let's see. It is. Yay. So we can just remove this, set that to none, and now all of these won't have that annoying animation. And I don't mind these things popping up here, but what we might want to do is actually have this link to specific categories and type in the categories. So let's look at how we would do that. So we're going to click on this pencil icon to adjust this call to action card. And let's make this one here for Asia, for example. So let's change this image. We're going to click Choose Image. 
And we're gonna look in our media library for this shopping image here. And then we're gonna change the text here. Okay, click on it here and edit it here, but I find it's actually usually better to edit it over here. So I'm gonna to to change this to explore Asia. And then the button text would be, I don't know, go to category, uh, Asia, let's just go with Asia category. And then the link, let's see if we type in Asia, if that will work. No. So what we'd have to do here is actually type in the link. So it should be slash category slash Asia. If we have it set to button only, that means only when they click on the button, but I think we should have it set to the entire card. So we'll do whole box. And so that's how you would link this category, link this box here to a category. And we could do the same with all of the additional categories. And of course, after you've made these settings, it's a good idea to click update and then check it, test it on the page by going here to preview changes. But in this case, let's just keep on moving here. So I like this section. Oh, one thing I don't like here is just from a design standpoint, we can see we've got this image in the background here, and it's got this square line here, whereas we have this sort of curved item here, and it doesn't quite look right. So I've got a different image that we can put in the background here. So in order to edit this background image here, if we click on the dots here, and then we look under style, we can... You can either have the background type, but in this case, it's actually what's called a background overlay. And we can see we have this image here. And so we can change, swap this image out for a different one. Someplace in your media library you should have this image here, sort of this like mountain looking dots image. And just a reminder with this image here, I did pull this image off of Envato Elements. So if you do plan on using it on your live site, make sure that you license it to use it. And I'll include a link to where to find this exact image so you can license it in the description down below. And then we're going to select that. And we're going to change the background color here to the white color. There we go. And now if we click up here, now let's see if we click down here maybe so we can see. There we go. Now we've got a more seamless looking look here. And you might need to also adjust the way in which this background overlay is being displayed. Right now, the image resolution is full resolution, but here, these sections here for the position and the attachment are gonna affect the way that it appears here. So that's something to keep in mind. There we go, I think that that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and add a section here with uh, our actual blog posts. So to do that, we're going to click the plus icon here, and we're going to click plus to add a new section. And here, these are the different types of sections we can have. We've got this container here, where every widget we add to this container is going to get stacked up on top of each other. We've got this container here, where every widget we add is going to get stacked from left to right like this. And then we've got multiple columns also as an option. Let's start out with just this straight down container and we'll have our blog posts listed here. So now if we go to the widgets, and if we go and we could just search for posts, and we don't want to use the archive posts because that's going to be relating to the archives that relate to the homepage, but there aren't actually archives that relate to the homepage. We just want to use the standard posts widget and then drag that in here. Looking like most of the styling is right, but we don't have the box around each item. That is the reason why is because the background to this section is white, and I believe that this box here is white. So let's change the background color here for this section here and see if that's right. So I'm gonna click on the dots here for the section. I'm gonna go over here to style, and then the background color, we're gonna change it to classic, and we're gonna change the color to this light background gray. And there we go, now it appears as cards. And let's go back and edit this post section here, and let's change this here to three columns. And instead of post per page two, 
I would say at least six, maybe nine, depending on how full you want your homepage section to look like. Okay, there we go. And then if you want to add that read more button, I think I like that. I'm going to have it automatically align the buttons. You can also adjust how much excerpt text shows up here. So you can either have none by turning it off or you can change it here to say 50 so it's a little bit smaller. And sometimes this happens here where in the Elementor Builder you make a change and you know it should have changed but it didn't. So what I advise when that happens is just click update and then go and preview your changes and see if it actually did make those changes. It looks like it did. That definitely looks a lot shorter here. So it did work, it just isn't displaying in the canvas in the Elementor editor. And then to go back to edit this page, we actually just need to click right here where it says edit with Elementor. Or actually it opened up a second tab and closed the second tab. There we go. Okay, so we've got this. It's not displaying right here, but we know on the front end it actually does look right. Now, one thing I'm also going to advise here is that we don't have this load more button because let's see if it'll let me do it from the canvas. What the load more button is going to do is just keep loading more posts on this page. But instead of doing that, I think it should actually link to our blog page. So in order to get this to actually link to our blog page, what we want to do is we want to remove this load more button, which is part of the edit posts module here. And if we scroll down to pagination, we will find the load on click and we'll change this here to none. And it bounced us all around here. And then below this, let's add in a button. Let's also add in a little bit more padding around this section here. So to add in some padding, we're gonna click on the section where our posts are. We're gonna go over here to advanced and we'll do padding of 10. Actually, let's go with the EM. I'm going to go with padding of 2 EM. And right now the padding is set to do is set to link together. So when you type in a number here, it's going to fill in all of these. Let's unlink it and make it for just the top and bottom. Set these two to zero. And I'm going to set this to actually three. Let's see how this looks down here at the bottom. There's something weird with this section. What's going on here? No, that looks right. No. Oh, I didn't change this to three. Let's change this to four, actually. There we go. That's looking a little bit better. And then let's go back over here to the bud to the widgets. And we can either search for button or we can just drag in the button here. And let's change this to large. And we can have this say I don't know, what should it say? Load more? Read more? I'm going to say more posts. And then we want this link to go to our blog page. We just type in blog or whatever it is that you intend, that you decided to call your blog page. We're going to have this go to blog and then we'll have this button be lined up in the center. And now when they click on this button, it'll take them to the blog page instead of just loading more posts. And we can click update here. Okay, now let's keep looking at the different sections here. We've got this section here, which you might want to use. And if you wanted to have it be like a little mini feed of your top different categories, you could do that. And again, to change which which items are showing up here, so they're all showing up in the same category, you can click on the pencil icon and then change the query here to... Asia category. So you can just type in one of the categories and then choose to have it display like that. We can do explore Asia. We can change this one here to Europe. Now I click over here on the pencil icon for the posts, go back over to, and we can go back here to the query and change this term to Europe. And we can change this last one here to South America. I think I only have a couple of South America posts in this little demo here, but you get the idea. Okay, 
there we go. So that's how I would use this section here. And then again here, we've got this section with this little box. So if you had something you wanted to highlight on your home page, you could use this section. I'm going to remove it. And then let's look at these flip boxes here. So the first thing to do is get rid of that annoying bouncy animation. So I believe it's here under the column. So if you edit column, advanced, motion effects, bounce in, and set this to none. And now one of the other cool things that we can do here to save us a little bit of time is if you hover over the column here and you do copy, and then you hover over this next column here and you do right, and then you right click, and then you do paste style, it's automatically going to change that's, it's automatically going to change any style changes that we saved here from this copied column here. So that's a, fast, a faster way of removing those animations in this type of scenario. And then I think the one thing that we would want to do here on this little flip box here is just change this to actually link to the Asia category. But also, you know, this flip box could be kind of good if you're building a different kind of blog, for example. So if we click the pencil icon here, you can change this image to like, say an image of headphones or something like that. And this whole section could be, if you had a tech blog, it could be like headphones and cameras and something else. So that's kind of a cool way of using this little designed flip box that came with this template. So I think you guys already know how to change how this links, but let's just go ahead and do that. So we're going to right click here. We're going to scroll down to settings, I believe. No, back. So it's on the back where the link is. And we can change this link here to Asia. So we have to type it in manually. So category Asia. And then you can have it link on the button only or the whole box. I think that the whole box is probably the best idea. And you could, of course, go through and do that for each of these additional items. And then we've got this section here. So you could add a YouTube video, for example, or if you uploaded a video to your website. Definitely don't recommend uploading a video to your website because even though this is really fast hosting, website hosting generally isn't made for hosting videos. So you'll probably be fine if you have a couple of videos, but if you're having a lot of videos, I definitely rec would recommend hosting it on Vimeo or YouTube or another platform that's designed for hosting videos. And this will open up in a light box, so that section's kind of cool. Don't think we need this section here, so I'm gonna remove that. And I'm going to remove this section here also with sort of the sponsors. And then now we're down here to the footer. So there we go. That's how we're going to edit our home page. And then the next thing we need to do is actually make our home page link to the front of our website and the post page link to the post of our website. So go ahead and click update to save those settings there. Okay, and then one more thing here on the home page is if you wanted to know how to edit this slideshow that's here in the background so you can add your own images. If we bring up the navigator here so we can get to this top section, and then if we go here under style, you'll see that we've got these slideshow options, the slideshow images here for images showing, and you can see it's using the slideshow background. So if we click on the little pencil icon here, we can either change the order of these images here, we can add to the gallery, or we can edit the gallery. So that's how you would adjust those images in the background if you wanted to do that. And then let's go back to the dashboard. So just to show you right now, if we click on the front end of our website, you'll see it's still the post page. So in order to make that the home page, we'll need to change the reading settings of our website. Okay, so now let's make the home page actually go to the front page of our website and the blog page actually show our posts. And we'll also add all of the pages on our website to our website's menu. So to do that, we're gonna go over here to settings, reading, and then we wanna change this home page displays to instead of being our posts like it is now, to a static page. We'll set the home page to home and our post page to blog, and then we'll click Save Changes. 
And now to add pages to our menu, we're going to go over here to Appearances, or Appearance rather, Menus. And we'll create a new menu here. So I'm just going to call it Main Menu. Do Create Menu. And then we can add which pages we want. You could also add categories if you wanted to here by clicking under Categories. Let's just stick with pages for now. So we'll click View All here. And we'll add the home page, the blog page, about us page, and contact page. And we'll add that to the menu. And now you can see here that they've been added to the menu. If you wanted to rearrange the order they're in, you can just simply drag. If you drag it to the right a little bit like this, that'll make it an item underneath the other item. So when you click on, when you hover over contact us right now on the front page, then the blog would show as a sub item there. I'm going to put the order back the way it was. And then we'll set the display location to header, and we can also just set it to footer. I know it'll show up on the header with the way that this template is set up. I'm not too sure if it will show up on the footer. And then we can click Save Menu. And then we can just go back to the dashboard here. Okay, let's go ahead and see if those changes actually took effect. So we'll go back to the front end of our website. And there we go. So now we've got a menu here actually showing pages. And we've got this home page that we created as our home page. And if we click on, click on blog, it should go to the blog page. If we click on about us, probably won't go anywhere. It won't because we haven't made that page yet. And it's a little bit tricky to see. But here we go. We'll go back to the home page. And now we can go back to the dashboard. Okay, so now let's work on just making some minor adjustments to the header and footer out of our website. So we'll start out with the header. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here under Templates, Theme Builder. We're going to click on Header over here, and we're going to click Edit. And it's a little bit hard to work on this right now because, as you can see, the title is white and the text is also white. Um, but first things first is that this should actually be displaying the logo that we uploaded, and it's not. So what we want to do is we want to replace this image here with the site logo. So we're going to delete this image here, and we're going to right-click on it and then do Delete. I'm going to drag in the site logo here, and you can see that we've got the site logo showing up. This logo is a little bit bigger, so it needs a little bit more room. So I'm going to drag this here to about 33.3. I'm going to also make this a little bit wider here. It's changing it on both sides, so that's irritating. Um, let's make this 30, I don't know. OK, I'm just going to make it approximately look like it's the middle. And then the subscribe button is actually not going to do anything right now because it's a button. So if you wanted to make this actually be a subscribe button for people to sign up, you'd need to make a page where they could sign up from. So you'd make, need to make a page and add a sign up form on that page. So for right now, I'm going to change this instead of being a button. I'm going to delete this button. And I'm just going to put in a search bar up here because I think that would actually be probably more useful for our viewers. I'm just going to drag the search form here and edit it, add it in here. And you can see here it's using the pre-made styling because we saved that styling from the sidebar. If you didn't save that styling from the sidebar, you would have the default search design and you'd need to edit it here. So you'd click on the edit pencil icon here, go over to style, and then use these settings here, probably the settings for the button mostly, to change it so that it looks like the other elements on our template. Okay, so that is a pretty good look, I think, for our header. So let's go ahead and click Update. And then let's exit out of this. And since we couldn't really see it that well, we'll just go back to the home page real quick and check it out. Yeah, that's a good look. Nice looking header there. And let's go back to the dashboard. Okay, so now let's go ahead and start working on the footer of our website. So to do that, we're going to go over here to Templates, Theme Builder. And then here under Footer, we're going to click on Footer. And then we're going to click Edit. 
All right, so this top blank area here is supposed to represent what the page would be, and then if we scroll down here, we can see what the footer area of our website looks like. So this top area here, we have a newsletter sign-up form, and with the base version of Elementor, this sign-up form will capture the name and email, and then email it to you, so you'll, you'll get an email that will say it's from your website with a new submission to your signup form, and it'll have the name and person's email address. If you do want to either capture that information directly within Elementor or integrate with various different newsletter and marketing apps, you will need to get the $99 version of Elementor in order to be able to do that. But when you're just starting out, you're not going to have a ton of submissions to this, so adding them manually to a spreadsheet or to your marketing program won't be that difficult. And then the area that we do want to work on is this bottom area here. So the first thing we want to do is change this image here out for our site logo. So I'm going to go ahead and drag in the site logo here. Then I'm going to delete this image here by right-clicking and then clicking Delete. Now we've got our logo installed here. And of course, we'd want to add some text in here if we wanted to. And then here, this isn't actually a menu. This item here is an icon list. So let's change this here to be a menu. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this. And then I'm going to grab the WordPress menu widget. I'm going to drag it in here. Hopefully, there we go, right underneath Categories. And then we can go ahead and edit this. I'm going to do the layout. We're going to change that to vertical. And then we want to change the colors here of this menu so that we can actually read it. So let's go over here to Style, Text Color. We'll change it to the white color. And then we can change the hover over to match what the hover over looks like here. So to do that, we're going to click on Hover. Then we're going to change the text color to our yellow color. There we go. And then we just need to remove this, what they call the pointer, which is this line underneath here. So we'll go back to content, I believe, is where we'll find it. Pointer, here we go. Underneath pointer here, we'll set that to none. And now this should match pretty closely with the look from the template. And then let's also change the toggle button, and we'll do none. And that is when we're looking at our website in a mobile view, it would choose to have a hamburger icon here, but for this, let's just have it be actually our images here. And then let's go over here and change this menu here, and we're going to make this our main menu. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this, and then we'll add in a WordPress. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and save this as the default look. So I'm going to right-click here, I'm going to do Save as Default. And now if we go back here to our widgets by clicking on the buttons up here at the top, the little box of buttons up here at the top, we go in over here to Menu and add that in. It should have that styling already added in for us. And then we can just change this menu here from Categories to Main Menu. And then I'll just call this Main Menu. Okay, and then we can add this Get in Touch with that Get in Touch menu that we made. So to do that, let's go ahead and delete this by right-clicking and then pushing Delete. Add the WordPress menu. And let's see if we change this back to Get in Touch. There we go. Now we've got a Get in Touch menu. Let's just update that to make sure that we save that. And then the last thing we want to do here is change our social icons to actually go to our social icons account. So we're going to click on the pencil icon here, and then under each one of these, you just simply click on it, and then you type here the URL of your social media account. So for me, for example, it would be Instagram.com slash Real Website Hints, but you'll need to go to each one of your social media accounts and see what yours is, and then add that in here. And you want to do that for each of the ones that you want. And of course, if you want to add a different social media profile, you can do that. You can either click on one of these items here, change the icon to in, for example, and then click insert, and then you can change it to your LinkedIn profile, for example. And then when you're done with that, click update. And then down here, we've got these links here to the various different potential places for our website. We've got the privacy policy, terms of use, cookie policy. So if you have those items, you might want to include those. If you don't, you might just want to delete that section for now. And then over here, the last thing we want to do is change this copyright. First of all, so that it actually updates automatically. And secondly, so that it has our update information. So I'm going to go ahead and click here. And then what we want to do is just basically delete all of this here. And then we want to hover over, and this is a dynamic tag or an item that will grab information from the database. So let's click on this. And then here under Site, we want to look for Current Date Time. We want to add that. And then we're going to click on the little wrench icon here. 
I want to change the format here to custom because we only want to show the year. And then basically these are all the representations of the different date formats. And we just want the Y for year. So just delete everything here except for the Y. There we go. And then here under advanced, we want to add the... So before that, we want to add in where it says copyright and then the at symbol. So you want to type in copyright and then the at and then space and then the at symbol is ampersand copy semicolon. And then after that, type in the name of your company or whoever the copyright would be attributed to. And then you can see over here, uh, you should see a preview of what that's going to look like. And then we can click update and that takes care of the header. So let's go ahead and head back to the dashboard. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add in or rather edit that about page. So we'll go over here to pages, about us, and we'll click edit underneath that. And then we'll click edit with Elementor. And then we'll use the little Envato symbol here, and we'll click View Installed Kits. And then we'll look for the About Us page. We'll let that import. Okay, so here we've got some work to do with getting rid of these annoying animations, and there was a lot of crazy ones here. So click on the pencil icon for the About Us. Look here under Advanced, Motion Effects, and we'll change that to None. Do the same for the subtitle here, and for this background title here. Okay, and then let's see if this column here had an animation to it. So I'm clicking on the gray column. Going to motion effects. We have fade in from left, so let's set this to none. And we'll look at the right column. Whoa, that might be on the image there. Let's see here. You can tell that the designers of this were perhaps getting a little bit bored. <laughs> Okay, so it's not on there, so it must be on the image. So we'll click on the pencil icon for the image widget. I'll go to advanced here. And motion effects. And I'm just going to turn off the scrolling effects. I don't think we need that. And then also remove the rotate in and set that to none. Okay, and then the rest of the about us page basically just comes up to what you want for your design, what sections you like. If you have you know, this featured on section, you might want to keep it or you might just want to delete it by clicking the X here. If you, have a, if you have your key piece of content, you might want to edit this area here to represent that key piece of content and get anyone who goes to your about page and is looking for what to do next to click on that next key piece of content. You can of course here add information about yourself or add or remove various different sections and definitely remove any of the annoying animations you don't like. And one thing that I definitely want to point out is that if you do want to keep the social media section that you go through here and you edit and you add in your links to your social media profiles so that those show up here. And that takes care of the About Us page. So click Update when you're done making your changes and then head back to the dashboard. Okay, so now let's add in our final page before we start looking at how to build blog posts, and that is our Contact Us page, or the Contact page. So we're going to go back over here to Pages, and then under Contact Us, we'll click Edit, and then we'll click Edit with Elementor. And here, I believe we already imported this page, so we can look for it here under the folder icon. If we go to My Templates, let's see here. We had the About Us page. What are, what are, oh, I guess not. So we'll go ahead and close this. We'll use the Envato icon here. Go to ins View Installed Kit. And then we'll look for the Contact page or Contact Us. And we'll click Insert Template and let that load. Whew. 
Man, a bunch of annoying animations here. I do want to point out on these annoying animations is that if you like these cards here and you want to keep them, but you want to get rid of the annoying animations, we can see here. I don't know whether it's on the card or whether it's on the inner column. Let's see here. If we click on the card, go to advanced, and we go to motion effects. Doesn't look like it's here, so it must be on each column. So we'll click on the column, advanced, motion effects. Yes, we got rotate in here. So let's go ahead and remove that and set that to none. And then if we right click again here on the edit column and we click copy, and then we go over to the next column, right click and we do paste style. And if we do that to each one of these, that will automatically change that motion effect to the none that we changed. And that also have the same effect for anything else. So if you don't like that the cards animate up when you hover over them, you can remove that and then you don't have to do it individually on each one. You can just do copy style and paste the style onto each individual item. Down here, if you're a blog, you probably don't have a map area here. So let's go ahead and remove this map section. Let's just make sure we have enough space here. So I'm going to change this here to EM and I'm going to change the top margin to five give us a little space here for the form. Again, if this form here gets filled out by somebody on your website, this information here will get sent as an email to you using the administrator email that you've set up for your website. And then if you want to keep this frequently asked question section here, you just want to edit it and add the text in that you want. And again, here with the social media icons, you want to edit these to have your social media links. And that takes care of the contact us page. So we're going to click update here and then we'll go back to the dashboard. Okay, so one of the other important things that we need to do when we're building a website is make sure that not only does it look good on our desktops, but that it also looks good on mobile devices and tablets. So let's go ahead and make sure we do that. So let's go back to the home page, go over here to pages, and then we're gonna click edit with Elementor under home. And so here what we're seeing is the desktop view essentially. So let's look at the let's look at how we see the other views here. So we click here where it says responsive mode where we've got this icon of a laptop and a phone. And then here at the top it gives us these different views that we can select. So we've got desktop, tablet and portrait and mobile phone and portrait. So let's click on mobile phone and portrait. And so far this looks pretty good. What we do what you might notice is that in the header section here, we're not seeing the search bar. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to click on header to edit the header. And you'll see here under this section, we are seeing the search bar, but it's grayed out. And that's because this column has been turned off. And that's one of the things that you can do with the responsive settings in Elementor is you can turn on or off different sections or different widgets. So in this case, it's the column here that's been turned off because we just have this one top column here. Let me show you how you would do that if you did want to turn it off. So you click on the column here, and then you click on advanced. And then here under responsive, you have the choice of turning these things on or off. And this works for everything, sections, columns, and widgets. And you can choose if you want to hide it on mobile or hide it on tablet, whatever you want. So that's how you would get this effect. Go back here to layout, and let's just scroll down here and see how everything else looks. Categories are looking good. One thing here is there doesn't seem to be very much space around our posts. So let's go ahead and add some space to our posts just for, oh, <laughs> we've got to go back to the um, edit page. So I think I clicked on the page there and went back to edit page. Uh, anyways, <laughs> one thing about going back and forth between the header and the page is sometimes you get confused about where you are. Okay, so let's go to this section here. And then I'm going to click here under advanced where we have our padding sections. We can see we have the padding that was set up for our desktop view. And if you'll notice here, there's a little icon here of a mobile phone view. That means that we're only editing the view for mobile phone. So I'm going to change this from EM to percent for the mobile phone view. And I'm going to link these together and I'm just going to put 2% all the way around. Whoops, link. <laughs> there we go. 
So now it's giving us a little bit of space on either side, sort of defining our little boxes here, and that looks a lot better. And then if we go here to tablet, we'll see that it's back to the way it was before, and that's fine. We can go back here to phone. So that's just affecting the settings on the phone view. So we can click update to save those settings. And another thing I want to point out, which I don't think I mentioned before, is here under history, you can see all of the changes that you've made directly. So these are the changes that we've made in this section. And if you look under here under revisions, you can see all of the changes that you've made, or not all of the changes that you've made in the past, but you can go back quite a ways in changes. And so if you realize, oh my gosh, I made a mistake, I don't know exactly when it was or what the setting was, you can go way back um, and click on you know this, for example, and that's going to change your settings all the way back there. Um, it's going to change every single thing that you've changed that page back there, but sometimes that might be the best option to do. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to settings, and let's go and look at the tablet view, make sure that looks okay. Scroll back up here to the top. So here we do have a problem with the header, um, where you can see there's all this white space up here. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm going to click on header here, and I believe it's this header section that should be giving us some negative padding. Let's see if that's true. So I'm going to click on the section here. I'm going to click on advanced. And yes, here we've got some bottom minus margin of minus seven. I'm going to change this to percent and I'm going to make sure it's on the tablet portrait view. And let's change this to, let's try minus 10%. That wasn't enough. Let's try minus 20%. Let's try 30%. There we go. That looks good. So that's basically pulling this header section here down into our top section here. So that's going to make that look a lot better. And we just need to make sure that each of our top sections on our website have some big image like this with lots of space up at the top, which with this template, it does. So we're going to click Update here. And then we'll just go and double check the desktop view. It does seem actually like we need a little bit more negative margin up here. So I'm going to click on, actually I need to, yeah, I'm going to click on the section here. I'm going to change this to minus 10% also. Whoops. Sometimes you've got to um, click over to the right of the zero and then type in your minus there. And then, whoops, click over to the right, minus, and then I'm going to add a one to make that 10. There we go. That looks a lot better. I'm going to click Update. And then I'm going to go back to editing the page. And I'm just going to check the tablet view, because we didn't check that yet, of the rest of the page and make sure that everything here looks good. Here, I think on the tablet view also, we need some more padding around our posts. So I'm going to click on the section here. I'm going to change this padding. I'm going to change it to percent for this. I'm going to lock these together, and I'm going to try 2% all the way around. Whoops, lock them together. There we go. That looks good. And I'm going to click Update here. And so that's the process that you would use just to make sure that everything looks just right on all of the different types of devices that your audience might be coming to view your website with. Make sure you click Update if you haven't done that already, and then we can go back to the home page. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is to actually start creating some of our own blog posts. So let's look at how you create blog posts in WordPress. So we're going to go over here to Posts, and we can either hover over it and go to Add New, or if you click on Posts, we can click Add New Post here at the top. And this is the WordPress block editor, and I would suggest doing most of your posts in the WordPress block editor, but you can also create posts using the Elementor editor if you have a more complex post. Like for example, when I did my post reviewing the different blog templates available, I used the Elementor builder so that I could add in all of those cards with the different scores for each one of the templates that I reviewed. But generally, I would suggest using the WordPress block editor. So here we have, I don't know whether they call it the canvas or not, but this here is where our text is going to go. Over here is very similar to the Elementor settings tab that we had. 
So here we've got the post. So this is all of the settings for the entire post. So here's where you would add your featured image, for example. This is going to be the main image for the post. And it's also the image that will show up in social media posts when you share it. And you've got your author here. So if you wanted to select a different author, you can choose here whether you want to allow comments specifically on this post or other posts. You can also change the discussion settings in the main setting to have your preference. So if you would prefer not to automatically have the comments turned on, you could turn them off and then turn them on based on each post that you wanted to. And then if we click over here on title and then we click on block, so let's go ahead and add a title for this post. I'm just gonna call it first post. And so this is the title of our post. It's also going to be, if we go back over here to post, uh, the URL should be our site slash first post. I'm guessing that after we save, let's go click save draft here. There we go. So if you click save draft, it'll add that in there. So way back in the beginning of this tutorial, this is where the permalink is. And this is what made sort of the nice looking permalink here for our post rather than something different. And if we click here, we can just start typing something. So text for our post. And then we can use this plus icon here to add a different kind of block. So if we wanted to add an image, for example, you could select an image from our library, or you can upload an image. And then again, if this image has some significance to the post, you'd want to add in your alt text here. And then we can also add in different types of content by using this plus icon here on the side. And then we've got access to all of the different types of content that we can add to this post, very similar to the way that Elementor works. We also have patterns here. So these are different sort of pre-designed sections, kind of like Elementor. I generally don't tend to like any of these. I just tend, tend to like to keep the design of my blog posts very simple. And then the other thing we want to pay attention to is headings. So you want to structure your blog posts in a way that makes sense. And you want to use your headings as if it were an outline. So when we add the headings tag, let's go ahead and add it down here. We've got different levels of tag. So the H1 tag is going to be the title of our post. And then each main section of our post will have this H2 tag. And if we have another section inside of a section, so sort of like if we had an outline of this tutorial, we might have a section on setting up a pressable. And then inside that section would be connecting our URL to pressable. And so for that, we would use the H3 tag. And if we had another section inside of that, we'd use the H4 tag. And keeping your posts structured like this not only help your readers sort of understand the flow of your article, but it's also very important for search engines to understand your article. And sometimes these headings, especially if the heading is a common search term, like how do I set up Pressable, for example, that's, that heading might actually appear in search results. So that's something to think about as you're setting up your posts. And then when you're done with your posts, you want to make sure that you add a category to it and unselect select which categories you want. If you want to add tags, which can also be a good way to organize your posts, you can add tags in here. And then over here, we can decide when we want to publish it. So we can publish it immediately or you can set it for some time in the future. And then over here, if you if you have Jetpack installed, you can also select this Jetpack item item and you can activate Jetpack Social and you can automatically share this post to your different social media profiles. So that can be something that definitely saves you some time. And then to publish your post, you can either do Save Draft to save it to work on it some more later, or you can click Publish to publish this post live. And then just check your settings here. And then if you do have Jetpack Social set up, you can see what the card is going to look like or what the media post is going to look like by clicking Preview here. You can see what it's going to look like on X, Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, uh, all the different profiles. And then you can just click publish to put, post that onto your website. And then you can click view post. And of course this post is going to be very ugly because I didn't set anything up. I also didn't set up a featured image for this post, which is why this area here is gray. So let's go ahead and change that. So to fix this, we're gonna go here to edit post. And then we're gonna go over here, make sure we're under post here, featured image. Just go ahead and set a featured image from our library. And then we can click update. And if we go back to view post using this icon here, you'll see that it's got that image as the background there. So if we head back over here to the dashboard. So there we go. That is how we set up posts on our website. And that's also the end of this tutorial. So I hope you guys learned a lot in this tutorial. Again, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them down in the comments below. 
and I definitely want to see your completed websites. So please leave them down in the comments below. And I hope to see you guys in the next video.